So my name is Daniel Dimarco. I'm working with uh, Deepfield Robotics, which is a daughter company of Bosch, which uh, most of you hopefully know. So like, uh, like was said already, we uh, sponsored the development of a Docker-based build farm for reproducible builds. And especially so we could um, publish our own uh, ROS packages uh, as binaries without having to publish them as open source. Um, yeah, so what does a build farm do? I think most of you will know this. Uh, the idea is that we automatically build Debian packages from source um, repositories. We need to consider the right uh, dependencies and build these files in order. Uh, it should also do continuous integration, which is uh, kind of a big word, but what we mean here is basically compile the source code uh, often enough and then run unit tests, tests if available. And also what the current build form also does is uh, auto-documentation, that is extract the uh, um, source documentation and put them in an easily accessible HTML form for, your, for you to put on your web server. So, this is all stuff we already have. Um, so why would we want to move away from the current build farm, which is uh, deployed by OSRF and which builds uh, very uh, bravely um, all these packages we all use? Um, so like I said, we're from a company that wants to earn money. And for that, we uh, could use open source, or we would like to open source tools but our own packages, um, we are a bit more conservative in that regard, so we want to keep them under our control. So what we do is we keep our source code on our own servers. Um, we could not want to, uh, we, we could not use the public GitHub because we have also some uh, components, drivers, which we uh, get from the suppliers, which we are not allowed to make public. So. This is the use case. And um, also what we want to do is we want to um, share our packages only to our customers, um, which is also connected to this uh, license problematic. And also another option, which we're currently not using, but which would be an option, is uh, that we keep uh, packages at a certain version. Um, for instance, if we have a certain version of MoveBase that would work especially well, and we want to keep using that on a robot. Uh, we could do that if we had our own uh, build, build farm and our own repository. So it's a, um, a use case for mostly for uh, corporations that want to earn money. And um, now I'm gonna talk a bit about why the new Docker-based build farm developed mostly by uh, Tali and Dirk of uh, OSRF is better than the current one. So for one, as we've heard in the previous talk, um, Docker allows us to have perfectly reproducible builds. Um, every job is run in, a, in its own container image, which is clean and uh, just feels like just a fresh, fresh installation of, a, of Ubuntu, of an Ubuntu um, distribution. And what you can also do, which, which is not possible with the current build farm, is you can run uh, pre-release jobs, that is, you can run the same, uh, same process that on your local development machine that you would also run on your build farm. So you can test, test out if you broke something or uh, in case you want to test some dependencies or stuff. This is also possible with the new build farm. Um, another point I also mentioned before is uh, that, we, that it allows us to host source code on uh, your uh, non-public servers. Uh, the current build farm assumes that it can check out the Git uh, from Git repositories that are publicly available without uh, authentication. And this is uh, problematic for a corporation environment, for instance. Another pretty big uh, pain point of the old build farm was that it uh, was pretty much only one instance that was that is running. So you could not, um, also it, or it would be very hard to set it up on your own servers. What uh, the guys from OSRF did is they scripted much of the deployment process, deployment and update process, so it's pretty easy to uh, run it on uh, arbitrary times on arbitrary many servers. Uh, similarly, um, they also simplified the deployment on your, of custom setups where you have a 
specific um, setup of different uh, servers or arbitrary many servers. Um, also, it now enables you to black or whitelist certain packages. So, if you don't want to build them anymore, you can just uh, set a flag. And it also allows you to build non Catkin packages as Debian uh, packages. So, how does it look? Basically, um, you, have, you need at least three servers uh, a Jenkins master. Jenkins is the build server software that manages the jobs which build the Built the um, yeah the packages, for instance. The master coordinates the slaves, of which you can have arbitrarily many, basically, and the slaves do the actual work. So they, those are the, the uh, machines that actually compile your packages, and all this runs in a Docker environment. So each job is run in a Docker environment, even the reconfiguration jobs. So it's very um, very well encapsulated. And lastly, of course, you also need to have a repository server, which hosts not only your Debian packages, but also the HTML pages of your documentation. And this is the Debian packages, at least, are managed by the RepRepo tool, which is a tool for Debian uh, maintainers, and it runs on an Apache server. And uh, this, uh, this um, Setup, as you see here, is deployed by uh, built from deployment scripts. So this is a repository containing a set of Python tools that automatically um, uh, yeah, set up the Jenkins master slave Apache server and the repository uh, using Puppet. So it's all automated and you, don't, you basically only have to change the configuration for your specific setup. And this is how it looks, basically. So we have uh, on the top left uh, um, ROS build form scripts, and they run, sorry, they run initially one script which calls, uh, for instance, the generate config jobs uh, script, and this instructs uh, Jenkins using the Jenkins Python API to create the release jobs, the documentation jobs, and the devil jobs. Um, what these do, I will explain on the following slide. Basically, these jobs then uh, run the actual packaging process, the building and packaging process, and uh, the artifacts that are generated from there are pushed to the Debian server, re respectively to the web server. And these scripts are in the ROS build farm uh, repository. Um, so I talked a lot about jobs. Um, these are the most important jobs you will need for your build farm. There's the ROS distro cache, which basically just um, creates a cache of the uh, ROS distro YAML files. So it doesn't have to be read and parsed each time you run uh, an update job. Import upstream is kind of interesting because it uh, pulls the Debian package from the OSRI farm or another um, upstream repository into your own pack, uh, repository. So what enables, uh, this enables you to um, build upon the OSRI build farm and produce your own Debian packages on top of the um, OSRI packages. Then we have uh, certain Maintenance uh, jobs, check slaves, and re release status page, which are pretty much self-explanatory. And uh, very interesting are also the reconfigure jobs, which then uh, basically reconfigure Jenkins itself. So the jobs, um, when these jobs are triggered, they reconfigure other jobs. And finally, we have the sync packages, which uh, moves the repositories that are built from one repository to the other. So the way it works is uh, everything is uh, Debian packages are by default built and put in the test uh, in the building repository. From there, they are automatically synced to the testing repository, and then the maintainer has to uh, trigger the sync packages job to move them into the main repository from which it can be used by by, by the users. And uh, yeah, then we have the actual building jobs, which are um, as I go through very quickly. Devil jobs are basically is a job that runs the, that builds the whole repository of yours. 
and also runs the test script release, creates the um, event package for a certain release, source and doc just as well. So they build the source packages and the documentation for a certain um, release. So this I pulled out only to show you the um, basic interaction. Um, the nodes in green basically are uh, run um, from either yourself, so in the initial configuration, or from a, a Docker, a Jenkins job. Um, the blue ones are actual Jenkins jobs, so you can see they interact with each other and they also uh, create Docker images, or at least the Docker files which gen then generate the Docker images. And in the end, um, all the uh, edgy nodes basically run in a Docker script, uh, in a Docker environment. So you can see there's a lot of uh, Docker calls involved, even the reconfiguration and, um, yeah, of course, the building and the testing as well. Okay, so um, because I'm doing this talk from a kind of a user perspective, I would like to show you quickly how you set up your would set up your own server. So it is basically two steps. One is the deployment step, um, which is ROS agnostic, which basically just set, set up the configuration of Jenkins and uh, your repository. Uh, like I said, we have uh, scripts for that, or OSRF provided scripts for that. But you need to configure uh, your setup in a certain Git repository, ROS build from deployment config. Uh, where you basically just put in your SSH keys and uh, IP address and stuff. Then you check out the um, ROS build farm deployment scripts and run it on your servers and you're done. Similar works it for a Jenkins job configuration. You also need to change some uh, YAML files in the ROS build farm config, for instance, to create your own distribution. And also, if you want to build on top of the OSRF packages, you need to fork and adapt the ROS distro to insert your distribution there. So now I'm going to very quickly talk about your use case and about us. So we are Deepfield Robotics, which is a corporate startup within Robert Bosch. Uh, we are about 20 people. We can, um, our, our goal is to um, put robotics uh, technologies into the agricultural field. I've just put in a few uh, examples here. For instance, we have a simple or a very simple application is the asparagus sensor because uh, asparagus farmers need to know how the temperatures in the in the uh, dams. We also experimented with uh, mechanical weeding. So uh, this is our bridge to destroy wheat. Uh, we just push it into the earth. We're trying to build a, um, a automatic robot for that. Very interesting. So, but this is not where we need the build farm. We have uh, built a research platform and prototype, Onirob, built fully on ROS, and we wanted to deliver our packages to our customers. So, because we're a startup and we're doing things very, um, yeah, very quickly, we need to do things very quickly. Until recently, we delivered our software by using Catkin Mate and install, and then just compressed the install directory and shipped it to our customers on a USB stick or so. I've talked with a guy from Ubuntu and he mentioned, uh, when I mentioned this, he said, yeah, that doesn't sound very German. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that's um, a very um, soft way to describe it. And we wanted to just professionalize it. You know, we want to, our customers just run ROS, uh, apt-get install, or just upgrade to get our latest packages. So our setup looks like this. We have three VMs. Our build farm runs in three virtual machines. <laughs> and um, push, we push our generated packages onto an external web server. And this is accessible by customers via HTTPS. And yeah, some of the challenges were that we had to use custom roster packages for the proprietary, proprietary drivers I mentioned earlier. And that we also put our code not on a public GitHub, but on a GitHub Enterprise. And we plan to maybe do that also in Atlassian uh, tools. So for the first challenge, um, custom dependencies, it's a very, was actually very simple to solve. So the problem is that uh, the build farm expects uh, to build all packages from source. 
And so it tries to resolve the dependencies from the package.xml. Uh, but if you want to build on existing packages, uh, it will fail because it doesn't, it doesn't have the mapping of, um, for instance, rosscpp to ros-indigo-rosscpp.dep. So we used the, the Roslab generator from Mike Burvis, which is a very cool script to just generate uh, lists, Roslab lists of these type, and it, then we put it in the ROS distro repository, which worked very fine, so that's a very good approach. For, um, yeah, private repos on, and putting stuff on GitHub Enterprise, we just uh, replaced the GitHub reference to the GitHub server to our own service that's worked mostly. We had some problems with uh, where the scripts expected unauthenticated uh, downloads, but we just put the uh, scripts or the repositories that were checked out this way on our web server, which was just the Rust distro and the build fund config, which is safe. And we still have some uh, issues. I will, for time issues, I will, I will only tell the doc pull. Docker pull uh, problem, so we had a problem that Docker pull would hang indefinitely and you'd have to restart the Docker service, but uh, update to 1.82 seems to have solved that. And yeah, that's basically my talk. Um, I've put in a bit of uh, links to, uh, in case you're interested, you're always welcome to uh, set up your own build farm and let us know what you think and what your problems are. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so this is actually what is also... Sorry, could you repeat the question? Okay, so the question was um, that there's a problem with uh, upstream packages that change um, the interface, so your own packages break. Um, actually, we did not encounter this problem, but um, all the tools are there to solve these problems because we... Uh, I mentioned this import upstream job earlier, and this is... Um, this is a manual step you have to take to update the uh, upstream packages. So we, you always have a bit of control over which packages you actually put on your own server. And you can also test if they still compile, or if your stuff still compiles with the, with the newest um, OSRF packages. So it should be fine. All right, one more question. Sorry? Can you? Yeah. yeah. So the question was um, our Jenkins slave is running on a virtual machine, and if there's problem with problems with Docker. Um, currently, not. So we also um, evaluated if we could run uh, our uh, Jenkins slave in a Docker environment itself, but. Um, we didn't try it out, but we uh, have heard that it could be problematic to run Docker environments within Docker. So maybe the experts can tell something about it. But, uh, but um, yeah, virtual machine works fine with us. It's a bit slow, but uh, works well enough. All right, let's, uh, let's thank our speaker again.